In Creo Parametric 8.0, there are a number of enhancements to the, in this video, we will take a look at six of them. Before I jump into creating holes though, I'm going to create some geometry that will assist in the second enhancement that I'm going to show you. You can see that we have a conical surface in the model. I'm going to select the surface and then use copy and paste in order to create a single quilt. And then with that surface still selected, I'm going to offset it. Right now it's offsetting to the outside of the model. I'm going to drag it into the model an eighth of an inch. That is a good value. By the way, while we're here, take a look at the different dashboard that we have for the offset command, where you can specify that you are creating a surface, a curve, or a quilt boundary chain. I will click the check mark to complete the feature. And for the moment, let's hide those two surfaces since we're not going to use them. In another video, I showed how you can create a multi whole feature in Creo 8. Let's take a look at that to recap. I will click on the whole command and then for the type, I'm going to change from linear to sketched. Let's place the sketch on this surface. I'm going to go to the palette and let's go to the polygons and I'm going to use, let's grab a heptagon. No one ever uses a heptagon. Let me change the scaling factor to something much bigger. Now I'm going to use the dragger to move it to the middle of the model and hit the check mark to complete importing the section and then check mark to complete the hole. Right now we are getting a blind depth. We can change that to, to reference and select the surface that we want to use. And we have a diameter of 0.5 being created. So again, this is the new multi hole functionality that you have in Creo 8.0. Let's hit the check mark to complete the feature. I showed that in another video, but one thing that I want to point out in this video for new functionality is that these different holes behave like a pattern, even though they are not a pattern. What I mean by that is that if I create a chamfer and let's click one of the edges of the holes and I will take the value that's being suggested. Let's hit the middle mouse button with the chamfer still selected. If I go to create a pattern, we're automatically going to get the reference pattern option. You can see the preview dots indicating that all the different members of the multi hole feature end up getting the chamfer as well. If you were to change that hole so it had a different number of instances, then the pattern would update automatically just like a regular reference pattern. Okay, let's take a look at the second enhancement. For that one, I'm going to go to the offset surface and turn its visibility back on for a moment. Let me suppress the chamfer since I am not going to need it going to go back to the whole feature and then edit definition in order to change its type. Right now we are using a simple hole. I'm going to change to a standard hole and we are using the UNC thread type. Let me go to the drop down list to make this much bigger so that you're capable of seeing it. Let's change it to a one half dash 13. Nice big size. And here we can see that there is going to be a threaded surface for the hole. Now you have three different options for the depth of the thread. By default, it is giving us a blind depth and it's giving us the value that we can see. And you can change that numerical value if you want. But another option that we have is to use to reference. And for to reference, I'm going to query to that quilt that I had created that was offset towards the inside of the part. And by using this offset surface, if I hit the check mark and just make things easier to see in a moment, let me go back to this offset surface and hide it. If I go to a hidden line mode, you can see that by using that angled surface, 
as the depth reference for our thread, well, the extent of our thread is controlled by that as well. So you can use that new option of to reference for thread control. Let me go back to the whole feature and edit definition to show you that in addition to using to reference, there is a through thread option. And the through thread option is available to you when you use depth options like to next or to selected. If you were to create this whole as an assembly level feature, it's also available if you use options like intersect with selected or intersect with all surfaces for the intersection references. Let's once more hit the check mark and you can see the preview for the cosmetic thread that will be generated inside of the whole feature. Next enhancement to take a look at with that hole still selected, let's edit definition and I can change back to shading with edges. Instead of UNC, if you're doing either a UNC or a UNF hole, you now have the ability for your clearance holes to have a medium fit in addition to a close fit or a free fit. If you're doing ISO thread types in Creo 7.0 and earlier, you had close, medium, and free. For some reason, the UNC and UNF thread types did not have the medium fit, but the medium fit is now available. Let me go to a more reasonable size, and then I can change from the close fit to the medium fit. You can see that we have the grayed out value that shows that it is getting the information for that diameter from the .hol hole chart that defines the clearance. Let's hit the check mark for this one. I'm gonna jump over to Notepad for a second to show you where that information comes from. Here I am in Notepad and we are looking at the old UNC default whole chart that was provided by PTC. If you take a look at the columns for the clear drill medium or the clearance medium drill and medium decimal places, you can see that we have zero values in both of those columns. I'm going to switch over to a different tab and you can see that the clearance drill for the medium fit and the decimal places for the medium fit, we do have values located in there now for some of the different kinds of holes that you can use. So again, now we have that information that will drive the, those values for the medium clearance fit. For the next enhancement, let me go to create just a new set of holes on this surface. And let me start off by creating a sketch on this surface. And let's choose for our reference. Let me choose just one of the datum planes to face a direction just so I can get a place to lock into. Let's sketch a circle, and I'm going to use this circle in order to define a fill pattern. So let's change value just so that we have a dimension. Then I can use the right mouse button to get out of sketch mode. Now that I have a sketch, let's create a hole on that surface. So I'll choose hole, and for the surface, let's just locate on this surface, and for my offset references, let me just pick a couple of datum planes out of the model tree and change the values just to put it at the center. Now I will hit the, ah, before I hit the check mark, let's go to the depth and just change it so that we have a blind depth in the model. So there we have a hole. It is a simple hole with a flat bottom with a rectangular profile. I can take that hole and then pattern it. And for the type of pattern, I can change it to a fill pattern and select our sketch. And we have our different dimensions. So for example, if I wanna create a bunch of these holes, hey, let's drag this in a little bit. 
That is a good number. Let's hit the check mark. So there we have a bunch of holes located on that surface. I don't know, it's a few dozen instances. Pretend instead that this was a few hundred instances or a thousand instances. This could end up severely slowing down my model. For that reason, in a few versions ago, there was a new hole type created or new option for holes for making this as a lightweight hole. I will click on the lightweight button and then hit the check mark and turn on my datum axis display. And the way that the lightweight representation works is that it represents the hole with a circle corresponding to the diameter and an axis for the location of the hole. This is a lot faster to regenerate than actual hole features that remove geometry from the model. So you had this lightweight representation option available in previous versions, but it was only available for one kind of hole, for a hole that was a simple hole that was flat. Now you also have them available for standard holes. So for example, if I create a standard hole, let's change this to ISO and let's make it a bigger one. Let's choose an M4. And then if I uncheck lightweight, hit the check mark, there you can see that we have the actual hole features and this one includes a cosmetic thread. Let's edit definition and change this to use the lightweight representation option. I will hit the check mark or the middle mouse button. And again, now they're represented by the circle with the axis. And so in addition to having this available for your simple holes and standard holes now, you have them available if you are going to use a sketch in order to define the shape of the hole. For the fifth enhancement, let's go back to the heptagon pattern that I had created. Let's find that hole and then edit definition. There is a change to the different parameters that you have available for formatting a note. If I go to my note tab, here you can see the automatic note that is going to be generated. If we go to the properties, we can see a variety of the other different properties in the model. But let's hit the check mark, and if I go to this particular note feature and click on it, and then go to the text editor, let's make this wide enough for you to see. If you have ever formatted a custom whole note, well, you had these various different parameters that you could use in the note. Now you have ones called, called note tokens. And the reason that you have something called a note token is that the way that the notes used to be formatted is that if you wanted to include the number of instances in a pattern, you would use the parameter pattern underscore NO. The problem is if there was only one instance, if there was no pattern, it would still report a value of one. But now inside of here, you have these different whole note tokens. And the one that I'm looking for, let's call, here it is, just I'm getting old and my eyes are not as good as they used to be, whole instance count. So this is what you would use instead of pattern underscore NO, and this would allow you to have the number included if there was actual instances, more than one for a pattern or for a multi-hole feature. And there are a bunch of other ones in here like whole instance space to include the space or if you want to use the left bracket or the right bracket. There are about six different whole note tokens that you can use so that these appear if you have patterns or if you don't have patterns. So it just solves a problem in the past when you were trying to create your own custom notes for a whole. The final enhancement to take a look at in this video for the whole features is that now you can have a tapered hole with a straight section. Let's take a look at how to do that. Let's create a new hole feature. And for the placement type, let's change to sketched. Rather than creating a sketch, I'm going to select an existing sketch that just has a couple of points. 
For the type of the hole, let's change from simple to standard. And instead of a straight hole, we're going to choose a tapered hole. Here we have the class. It is ISO 7. That's good. We will use the screw size. We have the RC 1 16th. That is good as well. If I open up the shape tab, here I have it displayed. Right now, if I go to this drop down list, you can see that we have no straight drill portion. I can grab this and I can drag it. So we just have a tapered hole being created in the model. As I drag the depth, then the preview changes and the depth changes in both the shape tab and in the graphics area. Let's make that a little bit bigger for you to see. Now, another additional option that you have is to add a straight section. And if I click on this drop down menu, you can see that we have all our various different depth options. So, for example, we have blind, to next, through all, through until, and to reference. Again, the default is none. Also, if you right click over the depth drag handle, we can choose for our straight depth one of these different options. Let's change this to to reference and I will select a hole in the model. And so that way we have the tapered section for a certain depth. And then we have a straight section that is going to the selected reference. So that's one way that you can do this. The other option that you have is to define a tapered tip. So when I go to tapered tip, then we have a dimension that we need to fill in for the straight section because we're going to have the tapered section, then the tapered tip, and then the straight section. So let's change this to a value of, let me click in the field, change that to a value of six. And so there we can see how this is necking down. Let's change this so that is bigger in the tapered section. Let's go to the one eighth option. We had to fill in the value once again for the straight section diameter. And by default, it is using an angle of 118 degrees for the tapered section. If we change this 118, to a value of 180. That way it steps down from the tapered section to the straight section. Let's take a look at changing this back to 118. So again, that's how you can have a combination of a tapped tapered hole with a straight section in the model. And again, we have the tapered tip option as well. Let's hit the check mark. And in that way, we have created our tapered tapped hole. So there you have it, six different enhancements to the hole feature in Creo Parametric 8.0. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.